सहनावतु सहनो मनतु सवीर्यम करवावह तेजस्वीनावदी तमस्तु महाविद्विषावहै ओम शांति 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 गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु देव परम ब्रह्म तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः श्रुते स्मृत पुराणानाम आलयम करुणालयम नमामि भगवत पादम शंकरम लोक शंकरम समस्त जन कल्याणे निरतम करुणामय नमामि चिन्मय देव सद्गुरु ब्रह्म विद्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चानूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगदुर दृश्यम लोचन द्रक तदृश्यम द्रक्तुमसम दृश्यादी वृत्त साक्षी भृगे वन तो दृश्य फ्रॉम लास्ट वीक शक्ति हिमाया विक्षेपावृति विक्षेप शक्ति लिंगादी ब्रह्मांडा जगत् सृजे सृष्टिर्नाम ब्रह्म रूपे सचिदानंद वस्तुनी अब्धोफेनाम प्रसारण so we have been exploring the nature of what is called the witness or drik and the entire world of the seen drishya the seer is consciousness infinite imperishable the seen is inert perishable and finite therefore in order to understand how are these two related how are they connected then this topic of maya comes in maya helps to explain only from the standpoint of the creation that from the standpoint of the creation how did this creation come from the infinite and therefore there is this power shakti called maya this power shakti it actually belongs or resides in brahman so in the infinite consciousness there is a power and this power is called maya and this maya shakti has two aspects to it one is called the veiling power called avarna shakti and the other one is called the projecting power and that is called vikshepa shakti so veiling and projecting and it is through this process that the entire world gets created okay we gave the example of the movie theater that in the movie theater there is a uh, darkness that darkness covers and conceals the entire uh, room with all the spectators in it and in this darkness everything is veiled then 
projection takes place. Mm -hmm. And when this projection takes place, then we see all these different names and forms playing on a pure white canvas. So on this pure white canvas, there is all these different names and forms. And as we see those names and forms, we start paying attention. And as we pay attention to one of those names and forms, we then get identified with that name and form. And all of a sudden, the experience of that character becomes our experience. That is called identification. Yeah. And this is where samsara begins. So maya is essentially that power which veils and projects. Veils and projects. After that in verse 14, verse 14 shows the vikshepa shakti, projecting power. Generally in texts they usually talk about avarana first, vikshepa second. But here in this text, vikshepa first, Avar in a second. So they're talking projection power. And in that projection power, what did they say? In that Brahman, hmm, Satchidananda Vastuni, in that pure Brahman, which is existence, consciousness, and bliss, all of a sudden there is this projection of name and form. And this name and form has come out, and that is what is called creation. So creation is name and form. Yeah. Nama Rupa Prasarana. Prasarana means extension. Extension of name and form. Spreading of name and form. That is called creation. So a nice definition of what creation is. Srishtihi Sarva Nama Rupa Prasarana. It's a nice definition for those who want uh, a bit more clarity. Now we have seen the Vikshepa Shakti and how that projects name and form. Now we need to look at the other power which is Avarna Shakti. So Avarna Shakti, veiling power, is taken up in verse 15. Antar Dridrishya Yor Bhedam Antar Dridrishya Yor Bhedam Vahischa Brahma Sarga Okay. Now, how does this Avarana Shakti work? Avranoti. It covers, yeah, this power of Maya covers, conceals, hides. Huh? And what does it hide? The Bedam. Bedam means distinction. The distinction between Antardrik, the inner witness, and Drusha, the objects. So within it covers or blurs the difference between witness and what is called BMI. And outside it covers and veils the difference between Brahman, the substratum, the infinite consciousness, and this world of name and form, Sarga. Sarga is another word for Srishti. So between Brahma, the infinite cause, and Jagat, the name and form, that distinction is blurred. Yeah. And Sasamsarasya Karanam, this then becomes the cause, Karanam of Samsara. Okay, so that's how the mantra looks. Now, what does all this mean? Yeah. So this is concealing. Abranoti is to conceal, to cover, to hide. What is it hiding? It is hiding a distinction, Bedam. And that distinction is between what? It is between 
my true self and my false self. Yeah. There is a distinction between true self and false self. Yeah. So in the first part, antar druk drishayor bedam. The bedam between inner seer and drishya, the objects. The objects. Now here, when they say drishya, they're not talking outside objects. They're talking the objects. Here means body, mind, intellect. Vasana. This is the objects. Because this is where the confusion is. Am I the pure witnessing consciousness? Or am I this assemblage of body, mind, intellect? This is where my confusion is. Yeah. So because we have mixed these two together, then all of a sudden, uh, there is this confusion. Which one am I? You know, nowadays, they have clothes. And these clothes, I think they have like, what do you call it? Elastic on the clothes. So when you wear the clothes, it makes you look very thin. Because I think it's pushing, you know, your stomach in or something or another, you know. So and when you wear these clothes, you look very nice and thin, you know. And so people like wearing the clothes all the time because they look thin. You can eat as much as you want. Just wear the clothes and then you look thin. Yeah. So now, uh, when you like wearing that so much, because everywhere you go, people comment on how thin you look and or oh, nice figure you have or something like that. So you start becoming very attached to that piece of clothing. You wear it everywhere, including to sleep or pajamas. You wear it. So in the morning, oh, you feel very nice, look thin. Now what happens? Between your true self, your body, and now this piece of clothing, that bather is gone. You can't see the difference now. Anywhere you go, you want to wear that piece of cloth. Mm -hmm. And if that cloth starts tearing, mm -hmm, it starts tearing, then all of a sudden, <gasps> get very upset. Get very upset. You feel like, oh no. Huh? And now all of a sudden your real body starts coming out. Yeah, if that cloth starts tearing. People also nails, you know, nails. They have their real nails and then on top of that, whoop, extra nails put on top. Then the difference between their real nail and fake nail, that bather covered. Don't know which one is which. So get so attached to the fake nail. That we forget what is real nail, what is fake nail. So even when fake nail gets damaged, oh, very upset, very upset. It's not even your real nail. It's not even you. The fake nail is damaged and cracked, but very upset about that. Same way, who am I? And there is this false imposter, this mask. And we've seen that mask. That mask is that ego. And we have seen that. We have seen the ego is made out of reflection of consciousness, subtle body, gross body. You remember our bucket with the water in it? And the water also has reflection. All those things are called drishya. Drishya. Here in this sentence called drishya. Seen. That means they are not me, not me. So that comes under vasana, mind, intellect, body, reflection of consciousness, all these things. And I have confused this with my true self, which is Sakshi. Sakshi, the pure sun that was shining down. That is my confusion. So currently I put the two together. The two are together in proximity and that is confusion. Which is real? Which is false? Which am I? Hmm? And I've taken the false to be the true. I've taken the fake to the real. And this fake one, oh, oh body, mind, intellect has to live in this world. 
and in this world get pushed here shove there he pushes someone someone pushes him all these things happen hmm? i say something nice to someone sometimes they say something nice back to me sometimes they say something harmful to someone they or oh, then they loaded they're ready to go hmm? you have to be very careful huh could genuinely when you give someone a compliment they have to think a long time before they give you one back but when you give someone an insult the insult come back very fast i mean somehow people have got all their insults ready to go you know <laughs> so you have to be very careful always compliment people unless you want to hear the insults coming back so there is pushing pulling for this body mind intellect mm -hmm. and as he pushes and pulls gets a bit wounded sometimes enjoys sukham sometimes suffers dukham sometimes praised ha huh? and then sometimes criticized stuti ninda bhotana oh all this happens to the false self the fake self your fake nail is getting scratched and dirty not the real nail the fake self is the one that is getting harmed and hurt and wounded in this world not the real yeah so this avrnoti shakti it is hiding this concealing this and therefore become confused and we take fake to be real and then any harm done to the fake self oh we take it very personal personal yeah that's why this discrimination very important because you will find also in all situations in all transactions whether it's in the field in all forms of human management human relationship management one of the things they tell in all human relationship management whether it's in family or at work or amongst friends they always say be objective be objective remain objective whatever argument is going on be objective ha huh? and listen to the other person's comments ha huh? before you react don't react to what they have to say that if all of a sudden the roti is today no good <laughs> don't react by throwing a roti at them slow down calm down ha huh? sometimes some people you know they spend the whole day cleaning some part of the house other person comes home and doesn't comment at all on that they comment on the one thing that's out of place then that person gets very angry has been the whole time cleaning and you are looking at the one thing that is out of place Ooh. hmm get angry you shout back at work you know happens in meetings in management people come up with ideas and they come up with wonderful proposals i propose that we move in this direction and i propose this is the project we should take up and i propose this is the team that should take it up and of course i propose i should lead that team i forgot to tell you that but that was the last proposal and i should lead that team yeah so this is my proposal send it to committee and committee takes proposal and puts it into the disposal it gets lost gone is <laughs> what was proposed is disposed no thank you at this point in time we do not want to go in this direction we have decided we will continue on in our current direction yeah and we don't want to employ this team to take up this project yeah and we are not that keen on you being the leader they generally don't say the last one but they would then say all the other ones from the rejection of the first three you should understand the last one has also been rejected that we reject the pro project we reject your direction we reject the team 
Therefore, we also reject you being the leader of it. Ho, 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 what? Wounded. I'm very wounded that my proposal got into the disposal. Finished. So they say you must remain objective. Must remain objective. Yes, so what? You, you are not your proposal. You are different. Your proposal is one idea that has come out of you. But you see, blur has taken place. Blurred the distinction that my proposal is a part of me. No, my idea is a part of me. No, idea belongs to buddhi, intellect. And buddhi is not part of sakshi. I am sakshi, this is buddhi, buddhi is intellect. That's where all ideas come from. Yeah. And so if we have that wisdom, viveka, then we can say the buddhi's idea is rejected. But you know, buddhi is wonderful, it's got many, it's got such a great power. It can bring up different proposals. So if this proposal rejects it, don't worry, don't worry. Come up with another one. Don't give up. Sometimes we give up. We get one idea, it gets rejected, I quit. I quit. Mm -hmm. It happens in family also. Sometimes you try to celebrate somebody's birthday, you know, and you come up with an idea. Let's go to this place. Oh, a nice thing planned. We'll go to the city. We'll go to the restaurant. And then we'll go walk after that. We can have some ice cream. Huh? For your birthday. Not my birthday, your birthday. So, let's go. So, that person comes home. They go, guess what? We've got birthday. Happy birthday. Plans are there. We take you to the city. Get dressed up. Come on. And we'll go for a walk and have ice cream. And that person said, Huh? 6.30, look how cold it is outside. You want to go all the way? I just came from the city from work. Now you want to go all the way back in? Too much traffic, not interested. Get dressed up. I want to sit in my pajamas only. If it's my birthday, let me sit in my pajamas. Why I have to get dressed up? Huh? Where, is the whole guest list coming off? No, no. Then I'll wear my track suits and go. No. Hey, yo, you are no fun. You are no good. You just sit around here the whole time. Come on, let's go. They say, what do we do? Go for a walk. It's three degrees outside. Why do you want to walk? And then three degrees outside, you want to eat ice cream while walking outside. What madness is this? What have you even thought about what we're doing? It'd be fun. So personal proposal also got disposal. <laughs> And then people say, I give up. I'm not celebrating your birthday. Forget about it. Huh? Next year, do nothing for you. Huh? That person's quite happy. They're hoping nothing will happen. But don't worry, these people come up with another proposal. Something else will happen. <laughs> so, so, huh? These things happen. You should not get affected. Remain objective. How do you remain objective? Always recognize the difference between Antar Druk Sakshi. And body, mind, intellect. Yeah, if we can maintain that clarity, that who got rejected? Buddhi got rejected. Sometimes we show love. When our love gets rejected, mind gets rejected. Okay, mind got rejected. Intellect got rejected. I didn't get rejected. You can't reject me. Why? I am yourself. I'm the self of all. So you can't, you can't even get rid of me. I'm sitting in your heart. Oh, I want to get rid of you. You can't. Bad luck. Stuck there permanently. So as much as you dislike me, I am in your heart. I am yourself and you are myself. Oh, wonderful. Cannot get rid of you. So they can't reject you. They can't get rid of you. Don't worry. You'll be together forever. Some people like that idea. Together forever. You will. As the self, you're together forever. <laughs> Uh, but mind gets rejected, intellect gets rejected, these things can happen. When we lose that clarity, that distinction, we can't see the difference between the two, this is called avrunoti, that avarna shakti has taken over, maya has taken over, confusion, that confusion, with pain, that pain is called samsara. The pain of rejection is called samsara. Rejection is not samsara. 
the pain associated with rejection is samsara or fear of rejection the fear of rejection because we have fear we sometimes don't ask anything we don't request anything hmm. we don't put forth any initiative because we're scared of rejection yeah that fear is samsara but acceptance and rejection these are not problem this is part of the world only huh? this is part of transaction this is part of transaction but when pain is there then samsara sya karanam okay so within us the blurring of the line between sakshi witness and operation of bmi that's what's happening within Outside, what's happening? Bahi he, bahi he. Bahi means outside. Outside what? Outside the body. That's what it means. Outside the body, where does the line get blurred between Brahman and creation? Now, Brahman here can be taken as God also. Between God and creation, there is this blurring. Creation, name and form, God pure consciousness existence from which it has come sadeva somme idamagra asi dekameva dvitiyam in the beginning sat alone was there pure existence that is called brahman then from that trip we see to maya shakti we see world comes name and form and now there is confusion between name and form and this thing called pure existence brahman yeah and when that takes place when there is confusion between these two then people become very attached to that world dependent on that world and then feel very distraught when that world changes you see what is the nature of this samsara samyak sarati that which continually changes ko samsara so this jagat will keep on changing but brahman doesn't change when you watch the movie white screen remains white screen but the images keep on changing images keep on changing but if you get attached to a particular image or character ho oh, then that character gets shot the uh, finish there is oh the hero hero gone hero gone there are some films where they kill the hero off it's interesting film you know you kind of walk out feeling a bit depressed you know what happened this is not a happy ending or some where the girl does not go with the man at the end she goes somewhere else oh this is a bit sad you know would you want her to end up with him you know they work so hard to be together and they oh, I'm going somewhere else oh. these things in our life also huh we see ourselves as the hero we are the hero is it not but sometimes the girl does not come with us we want her to come with us but she that she goes or somewhere else huh we want to be heroic face our enemies and vanquish them but in life i go and ask my boss for a raise and that he vanquishes me only He said, "I'm not only not giving you a raise; you don't have your job anymore. Job is gone. Are you? So I went there looking for a raise, lost my job. Are you? So <laughs> villain vanquished the hero. These things happen. And if we don't understand this nature of change of the world, then we can become very disillusioned with that world. You know, we can lose a lot of faith in the world, hope in that world." and it's not the fault of the world actually it's our own fault mm-hmm. that on that which is moving that which is changing you expect it to remain still the confusion between the two name and form constantly changing brahman is steady but you confuse the two when you confuse the two you expect name and form to be eternal and name and form cannot be eternal 
We expect our relationship to be eternal. That we're friends with someone, friends forever. That's why we make little bracelets, BFF. Yay. Best friends forever. Best friends forever. You can have this. I said BFF is a good thing. Keep it. But it should stand for Brahman first and forever. That's what it should remain. Brahman first and not best friends forever. Brahman first and forever. You keep Brahman as your <laughs> most important friend. Then you won't have problems. Huh? Now, just change the language here. Change Brahman to God. Hmm? In life, when we have certain, like the rejection, failures, things happen, then many times we lose faith in God. World disappoints us. Hmm? Work so hard huh, for this job, did not get it. Studied so hard for exam, did not get the mark. Spent so many, so much money on trying to uh, court this girl and she married some other person, you know, somewhere else, arranged marriage with the parents. <gasps> oh, what all the movies I spent on milkshakes finished. None. So, we know we become very disillusioned because we feel, <gasps> what happened? Changed all of a sudden, things changed. We had good relationship with this person. Now, don't know what happened. Things are not good. We don't get along anymore. We used to, but not anymore. Yeah. Now, if we cannot see the difference between God and these changes, worldly transaction, we lose faith in world, we lose faith in God. Loss of faith in this world is loss of faith in God. And if there is no God, actually. If God was there, then I would have got the job. Well, the man who got the job is saying, God definitely is there. That's why I got the job on this. So God has got a very tricky situation. He's got two people and only one job. So it doesn't matter who he gives the job to. Somebody going to be unhappy. <laughs> so, you know, when this confusion is there, then I said, difficulties or loss of faith in the world leads to loss of faith in God. Now, if we separate these two successfully, that Brahman is there, God is there, and then on top of that, name and form is projected. Two different things. Then what? As this name and form changes, relationship changes, status changes, huh? As these things change, God has not changed. God remains the same. He is still there. People may come and go. Job comes and go. Friends come and go. Money comes and go. God is still there. God is eternal. Other things come and go. That's there. If you have this discrimination, you know, with this vision you see life, it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem. Easy. But because there is confusion and we have blurred them, then samsara is. Yeah? Samsara is. Okay? Now, this is again going to be explored in bigger detail. But here, this verse is talking about the power of the veiling shakti. Avrana shakti. What is it? What is it? The ramifications. What does it do? The consequences. The consequences are that inner witness and BMI get confused, and therefore we personalize every situation. And in the world outside, creation of name and form, and God who is the substratum Brahman, they get confused. And when they get confused, when the world hurts me, I think God has hurt me. When the world gives up on me, I feel God has given up. So we become disillusioned. That disillusionment, that pain is called samsara. They call samsara. Okay. That's called samsara. Now, next verse. Next verse is now going to talk. What is it? This jiva. This jiva is the one who is the false self. We're going to re look at him again. Okay. This we have seen before, but now it is just coming again, different language. So, this is now verse 16. 
साक्षिण पुर तो भाति साक्षिण पुर तो भाति लिंगम देहेन संयुत लिंगम देहेन संयुत चितिच्छाया सवेशा चितिच्छाया सवेशा जीव से व्यावहारिक जीव से व्यावहारिक Due to its proximity to the witness, shines the subtle body, which, in partnership with the gross body, due to the influence of reflected consciousness, becomes the empirical embodied self, Jiva. Oh, a long word. <laughs> so this is a very technical definition of Jiva. Who is Jiva? The false self, the fake me. Okay, fake me. Like I said, fake nails. Real nails. This is now describing the fake nail. Huh? So this is very, it's a very interesting definition. It's probably one of the most technical definitions you will find of the word jiva. It's a good one to know, you know, especially if you're keeping. You know, one thing as students of Vedanta, when you study texts like this, it is worth keeping kind of a journal or notebook where good definitions come. And now in this text, very good definitions have come. So now this is a good definition of Jiva. So on this you write verse 16 definition of Jiva. Yeah. We saw in earlier one, there was a very good definition of, or a good definition of Srishti, verse 14. Srishti is Sarva Nama Rupa Prasarana. Uh, extension of all name and form. There's book creation. The definitions. This helps to bring clarity. When you have clarity of thinking, then you have clarity of discrimination, and then you will find meditation becomes a lot easier. It's easier to navigate the thoughts that are going on in your mind because you have clear knowledge. So here, for the sake of clarity, again, now very detailed description of Jiva. Now, none of this actually is really new to us because we've seen all this back. Yeah, we saw all this back in verse 6, 7, 8, you know, and we'll go back to our bucket, you know, our bucket is the best thing to look at. Uh, we have not kicked the bucket, it is still there, so that's good, let us have a look at the bucket, and in the bucket, everything will be seen, okay, back, yeah, oh, oh. Ha. so now what is it saying, Sakshina, Sakshi, Sun, Purata in the proximity of the sun. Bhatam huh? Bhanam. Bhatam huh? shining. Lingam. Lingam here stands for the water. The water that is in the bucket is called Linga Sharira. Sukshma Sharira. Ego, intellect, mind, memory. Yeah. Plus Dehena. Dehena means body, bucket. So water and bucket plus also chitti chaya chitti chaya means reflection reflection in the bucket that's called reflected consciousness yeah so now this component the bucket the water the reflection uh, in the proximity of the sun maybe the sun has to be here the sun has to be here and when you put this bucket with water and you get reflection, this whole thing, everything sitting on this green grass, this is called jiva. Okay? So what is jiva? This chap here, the bucket, the water, the reflection. That's it. That's it. That's what that jiva is. Okay? And this jiva, vyavaharikaha. Vyavaharikaha is the one who is transacting with the world okay so sun is not transacting with the world okay sun illumines the world but sun does not transact with any objects in the world who is transacting in the world it is bucket water and its reflection that is who is transacting with the world body mind intellect and reflected consciousness these are the ones that are transacting with the other jivas. 
Or the other jiva, mummy jiva is there, daddy jiva is there, husband or wife jiva is there, chunnu jiva is there, munnu jiva is there, chunnu munnu, all these are different jivas. Then boss jiva, friend jiva, sister brother jiva, all these different jivas. They're all different buckets with different water and therefore different reflections. Okay? So some people's bucket is quite large, you know, large bucket. Mm -hmm. And some people's bucket, tin bucket, because they're wearing that elastic bands I was talking about. So they have tin bucket. Okay. Some people's bucket painted because they dye their hair. So they paint their bucket. What is that? Solariums you can go to tan yourself. You're painting your bucket. You can do all these things. Paint your bucket, put makeup. It's painting a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> so big bucket, tin bucket, painted bucket, all different types of buckets are there. Water, what also different types of water? Clear water, muddy water, huh? agitated water, muddy, dirty water, tamasik guna. Yeah. Agitated water, rajasik. And clear, spotless, placid water, saftik. So we also meet different people, different vasana or guna predominance. So different things are there. Yeah. So sometimes muddy, sometimes clear, sometimes agitated. And we also go through that as well. Our water also changes. Sometimes, you know, in this world, some people, sometimes we have transaction and mud gets put into our water. And then our mind become a bit muddy, a bit of a muddy mind. We don't know what's happening. Yeah. So as we transact with this world, as the bucket sits there, then what happens? Wind blows, dirt falls into the bucket. That happens. Wind blows, water becomes very restless. Clouds come, reflection becomes dim. All these environmental changes can take place. So as clouds come, reflection becomes dim. As wind comes, water becomes agitated. And as dirt falls into it, water becomes dirty. Bucket also becomes weathered over time. Even if you leave plastic bucket outside, it becomes weathered. And then sometimes cracks can form, huh? become a bit brittle. All this is called transaction. This is all called transaction. You see, it is transacting with the world outside. Mm -hmm. But who am I? I'm sun. And what is happening to the sun when all these things happen? When the clouds come across, does anything happen to the sun? No, sun remains there. Sun doesn't care if clouds are there or not. Yeah. When wind comes, and agitates the water. What happens to the sun? Nothing. Sun is still there. When dirt is dropped in, nothing happens. And when the bucket ages, cracks, and becomes brittle, anything happens to the sun? Nothing. So who is the one that is affected by all these transactions in the world? It is this jiva. This jiva is bucket, water, and reflection. Body, mind, intellect, reflection of consciousness. That is called jiva. Okay? And jiva is the one, vyavaharikaha, transacting. Jiva has got agendas. Jiva has got something that it wants to achieve. Yeah? All this is coming down to the jiva. Sakshi witness has got no agenda. Sakshi witness, but nothing it wants to achieve. The sun doesn't have anything it needs to do. It just shines on me. So I am here to shine. Surya Bhakti, I shine. Sun shine. That's it. No agenda. No agenda. Jiva has got agenda. So who is the one that gets upset? Jiva gets upset. Why? Because the agenda does not get fulfilled. Jiva proposes. When I said proposes, sometimes get disposed. Proposal, disposal. Jiva gets affected because Jiva has proposed. Sakshi doesn't propose anything. Sakshi is reveling 
in his own fullness. You see, the sun is full. The sun is complete. The sun is infinite. So much larger than this entire planet is the sun. Yeah. And nothing is happening to that sun. With the gain and loss that is happening, nothing. Now, COVID has taken over the entire earth. Has COVID affected the sun? Does the sun need to go to clinic, get tested, check your temperature? If you check the temperature of the sun, your thermometer will break. Huh? Sun doesn't need to go to COVID clinic and take antibiotics or whatever is there. Huh? Sun is hey, going. So when COVID is there, sun is there. Huh? No COVID, sun is there. You know, Earth has gone through a period called Ice Age. And even during the period of Ice Age, sun was still there. He said, I'm not icy. I'm not cold. The sun didn't put a jacket on and say, ooh, you want to go ice age? Better get a jacket. Nothing. Sun is the sun. Sun is fantastic. That's why, you know, when people sometimes draw pictures of the sun, they put sunglasses on the sun. Because it looks very cool. It's always cool. In the sense that collected, calm, unaffected. You see? Because we generally think cool people wear sunglasses. Huh? So, <laughs> sun is wearing sunglasses. That means always calm, collected. Why? Purnam, complete. Because Purnam, therefore no agenda. Because no agenda, no vyavahar. The more incomplete we feel, the more agendas we have, and the more agendas we have, the greater chance that one of them is not going to work. Yeah? So all the agendas we have, they are connected to the feeling of being incomplete. Complete or incomplete. If you feel complete, you have less agendas. When I say agenda, things you are insistent upon happening. This must happen. That's for agenda. And the stronger our agendas, the stronger is the disturbance in the mind. The bucket more agitated when the agenda is very strong. Yeah. So like I said, sometimes small bucket is there, simple bucket is there from $2 shop. So when $2 shop bucket looks at the other bucket and the other bucket is fancy gold bucket and it has got fancy decorations and ornamentations and I am the $2 bucket sitting on the green grass. This is a fancy golden bucket Kalasha sitting on marble statue. Such a nice house it has. Then I, the bucket sitting on the green grass, start feeling a bit inadequate. Yeah. Then I say, I am blue plastic bucket. This is shining gold Kalasha. I want to be like him. I want to be like that bucket. Yeah, I want to be like that bucket. And then that bucket got three other colors next to it. It's, oh, nice family. Look at your buckets around you. Huh? So, <laughs> and then you're like, I don't like my buckets around me. They're not that exciting. They don't do what I tell them to do. I tell them, put their things away. They don't do anything wrong. They disobedient buckets I have. Huh? So I look at their family and say, they're nice family. Nice house they have. Mm, nice furnishings they have. Um, all this is coming from what? This is a sense of inadequacy. A poor num. Incomplete. 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 Now who is battling with who? It is bucket against bucket. What is happening to sun? Nothing. Nothing is happening to the sun. The sun doesn't care who is gold and who is plastic. The sun doesn't care who is sitting on the grass. And who's sitting on a marble statue? The sun doesn't care how many other buckets you have around you, the size of your retinue of buckets. It doesn't care, just shining only. Sakshi is above and beyond. Yeah. But Jiva is the one with agendas. 
Hmm? Jiva has got a agenda. I want to move up, move up in the world. I want to go from grass to marble. Okay. I want to go from plastic to gold. Okay. I want to stop being alone. I want to have another bucket with me and then produce many buckets. We can all live together as one big group of buckets. Yeah, we share water. I can pour my water into them. They can pour some of their water into me. We can have lots of fun together. So this all this is the apurnam as you feel purna. Sun is saying, I don't care any of these. You can do. There's no problem. Sun says do whatever you want, but don't feel incomplete. You, know, you don't feel incomplete. Because sometimes I say, you will try to go from grass to marble, but it doesn't happen. Yeah? You end up on concrete. Okay, concrete better than grass, and I feel a bit happier, but I didn't get to marble. Hmm? You will try to go from plastic to gold, but you might end up with copper. Okay, I got copper. Yeah. Maybe you wanted six children. Okay, three children. Okay, yeah, but I don't know who wants six children nowadays, but you know, anyway, these things can be there. Lots of friends, lots of family. Yeah. So, all these agendas, these agendas all belong to Jiva. Sun has got no agenda whatsoever, just sitting there shining very happily, very content. You know, Earth is moving around the sun, sun's not moving around anyone. Hmm? Sun is just sitting there. This one is running around. Mm -hmm. If you have seen, have you seen, like even in world, huh, when one person wants to win the favor of another person, they hover around that person a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when that person goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they chase after them. It's called retinue. And they're constantly hovering around them. This person sits there, <laughs> everywhere. So whoever is orbiting, the one orbiting is seeking the favor of the one that is still. The one that is still is self-content. Atma, Rama, her, delighting in themselves. The one that is orbiting has got something, one agenda he wants. If I serve this person, I can get a favor from them. They have got agendas. The one that is there, Atma, Rama, he is ever content. I will sit here, I will sit on floor, I will sit on chair, I will sit in this room and sit in that The other one is hovering around wherever the main one is. Yeah. Jiva is doing this. The Jiva is the one hovering around everywhere. We have a harikaha, going here, going there. Ah, agenda, agenda, agenda. Yeah. So because of this agenda, Jiva is constantly running here, there. But actually, reality, Sakshina, I'm Sakshi only. I am that Sakshi. I am the infinite, all complete, Purnam, Brahman. That is who I am. Oh, I mean, the Purnata. I don't have any agenda. And I revel and delight in my own self. Hmm. Hmm. Practically what that means, practically what that means is, as you let go of these agendas, you let go of your insistence. And as you let go of your insistence, each and every experience of life becomes more pleasant. When we have very strong insistence upon something, now think, just think. You want something very bad. When you want something very bad, are you at peace at that time? You cannot be at peace because desire is so strong. I want, I want, I want. I... So a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety. That's why job interviews are very interesting. People have certain jobs they want, they want bad. Like this particular job must have. So before the job interview, a lot of anxiety. Because they want it so badly, insisted. Yeah. So before sitting the interview, and even uh, there's a lot of anxiety. Then while sitting the interview, a lot of anxiety as well. It's called fever, juara, excitement, anxiousness, huh? anticipation, all that starts coming. Yeah. So we have anxiety before, 
and then we have this restlessness that is happening at the time of the interview and then after the interview ah uh, if you feel it went bad oh, you feel a bit depressed didn't go well did not go well this one no good they i got my name wrong in this one i yo oh, they asked me, i got my name wrong oh that was the first blunder i was shaking everyone's hand i shook the wrong person's hand first he was a janitor i didn't know i thought he was a manager on i shook janitor first and spent half an hour talking to him later on found that he doesn't even work there i yo mm, did not do well uh -huh. and then you know if you don't get the job obviously there is and then even if that person gets the job there is such excitement that again they're not balanced again you again lose your balance because excitement is so high they are elated exhilarated again unbalanced so even when we get what we want you know we are not poised we like to think we are poised but we're not we're actually in a state of excitement at that time and then when you get it you go and show off to everyone and then all the other people they get a bit jealous you know because in your excitement you're so excited you tell everyone and then after that what happens it creates jealousy amongst colleagues you know because there's a why is he talking so much about his achievements now yeah and then some people say he boasting some people don't say anything they become very jealous why he got it i don't really deserve a candidate he doesn't have the qualifications i'm more qualified than him i don't know why he got it so even when we get what we want you know seeds of jealousy can be created in the hearts of others because we become unbalanced and we act in a way that sometimes causes others to feel disturbed you know i think it can happen in family only one sibling achieves the other one feels very low huh one sibling achieves good grades the other one feels like mm, parents love them more than me so i got this one keeps scoring all good marks and their test gets put on the fridge my test no one puts on any fridge anywhere in fact i ask them put on the fridge nothing i even draw pictures they don't get to the fridge nothing gets onto the fridge oh so upset i am so i decided to invest in a second fridge we should buy a second fridge and then put that fridge and then put all my things on that fridge but even when we got second fridge they said we're going to keep that fridge in the garage i yo now i put my things on the fridge in the garage sibling rivalry you know we we feel parents love them more parents love them more so even in our gain and in our joy we can still create problems cuz not balanced all this is part of jiva hasyat vyavaharika her this transactional jiva strong agendas things don't work out now as the agenda become more relaxed you're not insistent i'm going for the job but as per my effort as per my aptitude and as per the will of god they will come and if it comes wonderful gratitude to god yeah you feel confident about yourself if it doesn't come then don't worry the universe has got different plans for you don't panic now when you approach with this attitude what happens is you are not in a panic state prior to the interview you are not restless during the interview and you are not depressed after the interview so throughout the entire process you are very calm composed collected mm -hmm. calm composed collected three c's cool fourth c <laughs> we keep adding more c's calm cool composed collected cool yeah now what happens is what is your experience of life that's the most important thing your experience of life is you enjoyed prior 
to the interview, you are happy. During the interview, you are happy. After the interview, you are happy. Now, what's more important, that you have happiness throughout your life or that you go through this entire tumultuous huh, experience every time you want something to happen? Anxiety, restlessness, frustration. The job interview is one situation, but it can happen with every situation in life only. Uh, people have it with birthday parties also. They're trying to organize a birthday party. These things, they get very anxious about the birthday. Will it go well? Will they like it? Will they not like it? Dinner party, will they like my food? Not like my food? Bhiksha for Swami, also this can happen. Bhiksha for Swami, also people, no, 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 no. And generally, you, when all this happens, I tell you what happens. There's some very good cooks. But what happened with so much anxiety and restlessness, you know what happened? They forgot to bring one dish. And then after you have finished the meal and they're cleaning up, then they open microwave and say, Oh, forgot to serve Swamiji. Huh? This one is it. spinach sabji. Now, who's going to eat spinach sabji after the meal has finished? Just as a snack, they sit there, eat spinach sabji. No one's going to. And then once you've taken dessert, closed. It's closed. No one eats after the dessert spinach sabji. But they, they have forgot to serve spinach sabji. So now what to do? Do you eat or not? You have to eat. <laughs> any, what I'm trying to say is any situation, we can get anxious. So the more agendas the jiva has, the more insistent jiva is and more disturbed jiva is. Therefore, as we let go of the agendas, let go of insistency, you let go of disturbance. And each and every moment of life becomes enjoyable. You know, people sometimes complain they're bored during this COVID. They were bored because lockdown and all that. Couldn't go anywhere, couldn't see anything. So got very bored. Sitting in the house, looking at their most beloved people, they got very bored. Fair enough. Okay. Looking at your beloved people, some of them you created only, but still got bored. Okay. I'm bored. Do you know why we get bored? We get bored because we're so used to agitation, actually. Because we're so used to a state of agitation, whenever a state of peace comes, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to appreciate the moment because the moment has to have a lot of masala added to it. And unless there is something exciting taking place every two minutes, sitting in my own homes, enjoying my, my own people uh, and my own garden, this bores me. Yeah. As you learn to calm your mind, you learn to enjoy the beauty, the natural beauty of each moment. There is a natural beauty to every moment that needs no masala. Mm -hmm. Whether it is just the sun trickling through a window, whether it is just the morning dew on the grass, huh? the small things can bring great joy. Yeah. Need not have agendas. Agendas mean keep adding masala. You know in food, we keep on adding all these spices and herbs and masalas and all that. You know why? Our tongue doesn't know how to appreciate natural taste. You know, all vegetable and fruit has got its own natural taste. It all has got natural taste. But we are so used to tarka. Put everything in tarka. Tarkafy everything. Masala. And then we're not going to salt. Then we're not going to chili and everything, right? And then when you're used to eating like this, and then someone gives you apple, you don't know what to do with apple. That's why people, even watermelon, they put masala on watermelon. Now, why you won't put watermelon? Watermelon has got its own taste. Why you to put masala on that? Dip. Put some masala on top. Guava. Put masala on top. Everything masala on top. 
Natural beauty, sattvic tongue enjoys natural beauty. None of these masala is required. Mm -hmm. Now think, in life, why can't I enjoy the ordinary? Because I'm so used to masala. I'm so used to agenda. I'm so used to some exciting plan that has to be there. So when the ordinary turns up, in which case it turns up every day, the ordinary is brushing your teeth. The ordinary is taking a shower. The ordinary is making your bed. That's called the ordinary. Why can't I enjoy that? Because I want masala. I want masala. Mm -hmm. Like when I make the bed, the whole family should come in there, make a whole dance out of it. Let's put music on and everyone dance together when we make the bed. So why? Why can't it have simple, simple, ordinary things happening? That's why when you look at Facebook, our Facebook page is all masala. It's all out, dressed up at our best at some gala event. Hmm? No one puts Sunday morning Facebook up there. Sunday morning, you should post your Sunday morning picture. Sunday morning is no masala. Huh? That's just getting up, wearing tracksuit pants, sitting next to the sink, washing dishes from Saturday night. Hmm? Some bags under the eyes, you know. <laughs> no makeup on, no nothing. Some stains also on your t-shirt. Hmm? There's no, no masala. But we don't put this up. Everything should be exciting and good. You know, even on cameras, they keep putting filters on. These filters add more masala. You can't be happy with how you look, add more masala. Now, I'm, I'm giving all these things in their jokes, but you must understand that behind them, the problem is the mind has become so addicted to some sort of extra excitement, spice, agenda, huh? that it cannot, it cannot enjoy the ordinary. And that's why we find being by ourselves to be quite difficult. But if we can learn to enjoy natural beauty, the natural beauty of that moment, you will find that every moment of your life you can enjoy. You don't have to wait for an exciting event to take place for your mood to change. That each and every moment you can find happiness yeah this is called shifting away from jiva and identifying with sakshi as we move towards the sakshi the sun the surya bhakti which is shining which is effulgent which is full complete sun is just sitting there and just illuminating everything it is the world that is running around in orbits, changing seasons, changing everything. The sun is just sun, Shuri Bhakti. Why? Because it feels full. So, as we understand now, so now clear understanding between Jiva and Sakshi. Uh, yeah. So, Sakshi is ever full and can appreciate and enjoy the fullness of every moment. Jiva is full of agendas. Must have something to do, must have something to see, must have somewhere to go. Slowly let go of these things by holding on to Sakshi. Remember, as Sakshi, I am Purnam. I am complete. With or without, I am still happy. Hmm? I can be happy. I choose to be happy. This is what we have to say. I choose to enjoy this very moment without adding any masala. <laughs> I choose to enjoy hmm, the cold morning. I choose to enjoy the frost. I choose to enjoy the dew. Huh? Just remain calm. Remain alert and you can enjoy that experience comes across. You will see the natural beauty of that moment. Tap into that natural beauty. You'll find it very happy. You're very happy.
Yeah. Okay. So now we have seen what is the nature of Maya. That Maya has a Vikshepa Shakti. That Vikshepa Shakti, Avarna Shakti, concealing. And because of these two, Jiva is born. And we've seen the problems of this Jiva has. Now after this, we'll start showing how to remove all the problems of the Jiva and return back to Sakshi. Okay. So now starts the movement towards enlightenment. Okay. We'll see that next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamalachade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurdhyo Namaha Hari Om